for Sky, to, based on Leeds Dock, primarily working on the Sky Sports Germany, Sky Sports UK platforms and Sky News, so a bit of background about me. And then, so today, what, what I'm going to cover, so I'm going to just talk about blogging in general, the, the history of blogging, the different types of blogs you can have, and then also about my custom implementation of Ghost Blog and, of course, Ghost Blog itself. So the question, so what is blogging? So just something that I've just nabbed from um, Wikipedia. So a blog is a discussion or, infor or informational website published on the World Wide Web consisting of discrete, often informal, diary-style text entries. So just a little bit around the history of blogging. So it's the term blog, that, that didn't really originate until the late 1990s, before blogging you had things like news groups. So in like 2002, you had about 100,000 Usenet groups, there were about 50 of these active. And then you had things like news forums, so like these originated in the 1970s in a primitive form, and then the web-based ones back in like 1994, and they became virtual communities across various interests and topics, like technology, sports, music, fashion, religion, etc. And then other ways that people used to like kind of blog in a way was they had online diaries, which allow people to write about their day-to-day -day experiences, social commentaries, and these are referred to as like diaries or scribbiness. I think I've got that right, it's a complicated word for me. But <laughs> And then, uh, so the, basically, during my research and stuff, there's, there's kind of like 10 categories that blogs fall into. So I'm just going to take you a little journey through the 10 blog types that I found for my research. And I think this probably encapsulates the majority of blogs out there. So there's, there's the rogue type blog. So this is a blog which kind of goes against the grain. So it stands out from the packed, it pack. It draws attention to itself. And then another type, so you've got the guest host type of blogs. So these are blogs that create content from... Uh, written by guest bloggers. So, the, I mean, the benefits of these type of blogs is you don't have to spend much time writing your content. It's, you can just gather it from other sources. And there's the, the crash test dummy. So this is a blog that focuses on basically testing different test strategies, um, techniques, tools, and it tends to share its findings. And then there's the niche blog. So these are the ones that are hyper-specific and they have a very narrow focus on the topics that they're, they're kind of talking about. And then there's the, the giver type of blog. So the, these blogs, they give away incredible free bonus content with every post. They tend to deliver a, a lot more value to the audience. And then you've got the guide. So the, these blogs, they, they tend to help people with their, their personal lives. They focus on personal development, life coaching, spirituality, um, anything like that, any kind of topics. And then you've got the homework type of blog. So the, these tend to be reserved for epic blog posts. You've got like, say, huge ones with two and a half thousand words that take a huge investment for reading also the downsides the writers got to put a hell of a lot of time writing them they, they require a lot more research and then you've got the the tell-all blog so the, these kind of blogs are they reveal like shocking details so they're highly valuable the about the information the lessons that they've learned so they, these can be it's a bit quite similar to the rogue type blogging where, but they tend to reveal internal details rather than external and then the, another type is the personal brand blog. So this is a, this is ideal if you position yourself as like a speaker or thought leader in the community, and it's got a great effect of like increasing your name recognition in the industry. And then the final of the ten types I'm talking about. This is the enterprise type blog. So these are your, your big big companies that um, that are designed for the company kind of um, style blogs, not an individual, and they generally contain content which will attract the potential customers to the to the enterprise. So, I mean, it probably, that when you've been reading blogs yourself, you can probably see how, I mean, some blogs might, might veer off into different kind of categories and stuff, but I think people that tend to write them, they tend to fall into them categories along the line somewhere. But I mean, happy if you, anyone disagrees with anything like that, you can have a chat afterwards. Um, then, so, yeah, so, alt, so if, the main talk that talks about ghost blog, but obviously there's alternatives to ghost blog. It's like, I'm trying to say why I'd use ghost blog, but, you, you know, there's other options out there, so it's worth exploring them. So I think if you didn't use Ghost Blog, a real, a real popular one is this. You could use for actually creating your own blog is Gatsby, which people, have, have, I'm sure you've heard of it. So it's a really um, nice static site generator. So it uses React, Webpack, ModernJS, all the nice shiny tooling. And they, they also, so I've got Jamstack there as well. That's a kind of, it's a kind of criteria that applications, but it's worth just having a read up on afterwards as well, if you're interested. So the J stands for JavaScript. So th this means it handles responses and requests running on a client. And this, it can use any front-end framework, but the Gatsby, they've, they've, they've gravitated to React. And then the A, this stands for API, so these can be the APIs which are accessed over HTTP using JavaScript. They can, they can be any custom built or third-party third party services. And then the M stands for the markup part. So this is where you're using templates to generate, you're, pre, you're, you're kind of pre-building your static sites at deploy time. 
and then they're not tied to any back end language like you know, Java, Ruby, .NET, anything like that. Another thing that integrates really well with GraphQL, the way they've, they've designed it, the, the, um, the framework. And then it's also, it's very nice for doing, because it's a static site, so you can deploy this on, you can host on S3, Netlify, GitHub pages, anywhere where you can host static sites. And then the GitHub stars, so it's a very popular project, you've got 25,000 stars on GitHub, so good option. And then also more, more, of, a, more of a blog type one is the, it's a Node.js based one um, called Hexo. So you, you write your posts in Markdown, it's, a stat, it's another static site generator, and this you can do the one-click deployments to GitHub pages, Heroku, etc. And then, again, this has got 23,000 stars, another very popular um, platform. And then may, maybe you didn't want to actually host your own or do too much development work and just wanted a, a kind of a gentler solution. You maybe go for like a headless CMS. You could use something like Butter CMS, a hosted one. It's got nice Node.js integration. You can use your main domain for SEO. Um, it's got an advanced editing interface. It's got webhooks built into it. Or maybe you could just start, I can imagine a lot of people are familiar with Medium, but this um, you could use Medium. It's been around since 2012, good exposure. Hell of a lot of people using this. It's got a Lexa rank of 247. There's a lot of categories and genres on this. Um, it's free to publish, free to read it. So, I mean, I've just done a search for JavaScript and there's really, really some really kind of old, maybe it's, I don't know how they rank it, maybe it's quite a popular article, it's quite an older one, but this, yeah, if, you, if you're not using it for all worth, just having a have a look around, it's got some really nice stuff on there. But yeah, I mean, I, I could have used some of them ones, but I wanted to have a little bit of fun and just, I, I, this is just something I've done in my spare time, so I just wanted to learn about ghost blog, create something bespoke, and you'll, you'll see the other kind of components that I've layered together to actually make a solution out of this. So why, why ghost blog? So why, why should I use ghost blog and anybody else use ghost blog? So just, this is another excerpt from, this is from their GitHub page on ghost blog. So, it's a fully open source, powerful platform for building and running modern publications. We um, the, the power series blogs, magazines, and journalism from DuckDuckGo to OpenAPI and Sky News. I mean, I've done a lot of work on Sky News, and I've not seen any, any evidence of it. But maybe somewhere down the lines they're using it if it's if it's on the site. But that's yet to be discovered. But I don't know. Make that what you want. Um, yeah. So the. Yeah, so Ghost Blog itself, so the initial release was 2013, the current version we're on 2.1.1. It's all open source, so there's got 8,000 commits, 290 contributors, and 27,000 stars, so it's a slightly more popularity than um, Gatsby or Hexo, that we've just gone through. So, um, yeah, so if you're interested in the tech stack, if you want to crack it open and, you know, do PRs or look at the code, anything like that, the admin UI, which you use for actually creating the blog post, that's all written in EmberJS, which is a JS frame, which I'm sure is quite quite a popular one. I've, I'm not that familiar with it myself, but it's, it's quite widely used. And um, so then the back end, the actual application is, is a Node.js Express, and it uses handlebars for re rendering your articles as a template language. So th this is this is the V2 version of the actual interface for the, for the blog. So you can see that's your, that's your desktop view, and you've got all this ability to have nice widgets, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, usual suspects. And then you've got the nice mobile interface so you, so you can if you want to write posts on you know uh, on a mobile device or you've got a, an, an error and you want to create on the foot wherever you are you've, you've got the ability to use a nice um, mobile interface i mean I, i'm currently on version one i've not migrated to version two yet but i'll, I'll show you what version one looks like it's just slow so yeah so some some of the customers use apart from sky news apparently they, there's a you've got like nasa open open api um apple brave there's some big players there, so it's, it's got some good good exposure in the tech community. So I mean, so what what do what do I like for what from my experience of actually using Ghost Blog? So as you can see, it's, it's got it's, it's a really nice clean interface. I've got it. So we've got a light mode and a dark mode. So here you can just um, this this is just my publish article. I've not got that many articles, but this is the published ones. <coughs> You've got draft ones, and if you had multiple authors, you can search them. And then say I had ones that were if I had PHP or JavaScript or whatever else, Kubernetes ones or something like that, I could have different tags there, you can just search for different tags and you can order all the standard stuff you, you, you can kind of do. And then you can do different settings on here so you can do code injection. So I've used the code injection one for injecting um, Google Analytics at the bottom of each post so I can get the, the metrics and uses patterns on there. So as you can see on the, on the top corner as well, the new source, so if, you, if you click into that button, that takes you, it's a really nice clean interface, create your title, the body, the body of your article, and then you've got all your, your formatting widgets down here and you can add images and 
um, hybrid. But it looks like the, the V2 one looks like it's got a bit more richer kind of experience with edit uh, the um, widgets and things like that. And then so just that's kind of the basic interface. But then if you click the cog in the top corner, you um oh sorry that, that's just, I'll come to that next. So I'm jumping ahead a bit. But well, this is yeah this is the mobile interface of, of V1. So it's it's quite it's, it's consistent design and feel. So yeah, so I just chuck that in there. Um, yeah, so when, when you click that, that cog then, so you, you've got the ability to change your post URL so you can set a published date, so if you might want to, you know, set in the future sometime, different tags, so that's the tags related to this article, this is about yarn um, versus PNPM versus NPM, on, it's a post that I wrote, and then you've got things like you can, um, you can put the, the description there, this is all things that help the search engine, so more like search engine and social media sharing, if you go on to, if you go on to the next slide there, so in here, you can see, so you, you can add the metadata for like Google and whatnot, and then Twitter, Facebook, and then you can inject custom code as well. So you could inject your, um, some, yeah, like your Google Analytics or something, like them kind of things at the bottom or top of your articles. Then you can, you can turn it into a page and do a few bits like that. And another feature of it is you've got app integration as well with it. So I can imagine most people are quite familiar with, with Slack. I mean, we, we use it extensively at Sky. And then A and P, if anyone's anyone's familiar with A and P, so the accelerated mobile pages. So, in in the carousel in, in Google on the on the mobile browser, you um this this when it crawls your site, you'll find you've got A and P support, and it'll inject your articles into the carousel. And that's and they're re really performant. I mean, if anyone doesn't know what A and P is, just I'm happy to explain. Or you can do your own research. Um, th then on on Splash as well. That's where you can get really nice photos, real professional photos that that took by really decent photographers and I'm not sure what that one is but. and then like WordPress you've got the theme library as well so you can you've got like th this is the default one I'm just I've just stuck on the default I've not got anything more advanced and then you've got different rankings of paid themes so you know $20, $35 and I can imagine they go up there so there's a huge library and people making a bit of money on the side from making themes as well and then, so my, how, how have I hosted Ghostblog? What's my implementation, my, my approach? So the approach that I went for is I spun up a, a VM on DigitalOcean and I'm actually running, um, I'm using the, the official um, Ghostblog Docker image, um, the, the Alpine version, and I'm just running that on DigitalOcean. I mean, my hosting costs are $5 a month and it's, it's, it was dead, dead easy and simple. It's just a kind of one-line command to get, get it going initially, but I've, I've took it a little bit further than that. I'll, I'll move on to that next. Yeah, so for, for my kind of custom setup, so what I've gone for is I've, I've using a Docker Compose file and I've got a, the using the official Nginx container. Uh, so I'm proxying all the requests through to my Docker container. So I've got a Docker Compose script that runs the Nginx plus the, um, the, the, the ghost blog. And then I'm just, I'm getting benefits of using Nginx. Like I'm, I'm, caching, I'm caching assets, I'm caching the content of the blogs and things like that in Nginx. So Nginx is serving the majority of that. So if, if I've got an article that a lot of people are looking at, Nginx is just... It's just just kind of serving that really, really quick. And then the other benefits I've got of this, this approach as well, by using, using Docker Compose, I've, I've been able to override the, um, the default templates and uh, load things like service workers and um, enable the discuss. So the, the discuss, if you've not seen that, that's like a little, little comments chat, chat thing you can have at the bottom of the articles. And I've, dis I've enabled that by overriding the, the, the default templates. And I've been able to have all that in source control as well, which I've, I've, I can share with people as well. And then, so yeah, so by, by including the, the um, overriding the templates in my style, I've, uh, I've built it as a PWA as well, so you can actually install this on your Android iOS device. Um, so I'm loading a service worker there, so the blog, you, you can test it yourself. So when, when, you, when you go offline, so you, your, um, your connection drops out, the blog works perfectly. So if you've, whatever articles you've clicked on it, it will just look seamless from the online and offline experience, the offline experience, which, so I mean, if you, if you had, say, one of these home style articles where they're really big, you want just to, so you open a tab on your, 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 you know, your iOS device, you just store it offline, you go onto a plane or train or whatever, it'll just, it'll work. So I think this, that's quite nice for the, the bigger blog articles for kind of saving for later. Yeah, then, so, so I just want to see, kind of like run a little bit of performance test and just a bit of analysis on myself and see what kind of um, like traffic it could handle really with running such a, you know, quite a, a simple solution running on a really cheap, naive kind of server on, on DigitalOcean. So if, if anyone's not aware of this, there's a tool in, if you go to the Expect tab in Google Chrome and you go to audits, there's something called Google Lighthouse, which you can actually run, it'll, it'll inspect and analyze your website and give you metrics off the back of it. So I run it against my site and 
quite quite pleased that the results came in. So they got 100% performance, 100% progressive web app, 100% best practice, 100% SEO, and the accessibility one's down. But I'm blaming the the developers at Ghostblog that that wrote all the the CSS and HTML. I've not touched that. I, I guess in version two maybe it's it's a little bit better. I don't, I've not got that far yet. But yeah, I think just that's. For, for me, I'm quite confident it's, it's in a stable position. I'm not gonna, it's not going to just drop out and people read articles and things like that. And then another tool that you get on the Mac that, um, that you've probably used for Apache Bench, so I just hit it with that, 5,000 requests, 25 concurrence, hit that. So that's, that's, my, that's my domain there. And I'm, I'm getting like 51 requests a second. You know, mean time is less than half a second. 100% quartile, that's you know, 3.9 seconds. So it's, it's obviously, if I ever got that much traffic, I'd be, I'd be really pleased, but you know, I might get two people at most or something like that. So it's, it's going to stand up really well. Yeah, as I mentioned, so that's my domain. If anyone wants to have a look, it's not the most fantastic blog, but it's, it's a blog and it's got some articles on there. Um, yeah, so that's, so you just using the Casper theme. This is, this is a, this is how my blog's turned out in the end. So I've got different, so I can, it's quite good for advertising yourself as well. I've got links to my GitHub profile, um, Twitter, LinkedIn, all that kind of stuff. And then all my articles are kind of scattered in this, um, this style. So I mean, th this one was, I was quite pleased with this one actually. So I did a comparison to NPM Yarn and PNPN. And the actual founder of PNPN found out my article and he actually started commenting on it. So I thought, no one's ever going to read this stuff. No one's ever going to comment on it. So I was, I was quite <laughs> happy that he actually commented and he gave me some advice about my benchmarking test. So I, I would kind of like, feel like I've contributed back to the community. And then they've kind of come in and, and looked at mine and give me some advice back. So I've kind of, it's been a two-way benefit for doing that, so I was yeah, happy with that. Yeah, so I mean, um, yeah, so, so what did I learn through this experience of doing this? So yeah, so I learned Ghost runs really well in Docker. I've been running it for 18 months longer, no downtime, perfect. Um, how to buy a domain, I've never actually bought a domain before, so the first one I've bought, used it on GoDaddy, so it's just quite nice, five quid or something like that, it's not much. And then, so I've provisioned a VM on DigitalOcean, they've got nice APIs and things like that. I'm not doing anything, there's no fancy Ansible Terraform stuff. It's just a click new new v, VM, which I mean that just and I just SSH, SSH onto that and doing my business, and then um, yeah, and I just learned a bit more about uh, nginx tweak and nginx proxy caching and various different bits about X frames off and no sniffing and things like that. Which I mean, if anyone is is interested, I'll share my nginx config with you. You can have a look exactly what I've done, and then learn about uh, let's encrypt. So I thought I was going to be a bit cheaper and go for the free SSL cert, which that, that offers you, and that's really good, and that seems to be dead easy to set up. Yeah, that's it. That's all I've got. Anyone wants to grab me afterwards, uh, any questions, anything like that, I'm happy to go through it.